This video lecture will outline the key philosophical foundations in the field of political science. And by the end of it, you should be able to define these three terms of ontology, epistemology, and theory, and then talk about how they are able to be applied to political science. So first, ontology. Ontology asks the question, what is reality? What constitutes reality? And how can we understand what existence is? So this gets at the underlying nature of the world. One of the things that we see is that different disciplines have different understandings of ontology, of how fundamentally ordered and patterned the world is. Um, so in political science, the way that we think about it is that the world is orderly. We believe that fundamentally it follows patterns and what we wanna do is understand these patterns. So if I am trying to understand democratization, I can look at examples from democratization in Chile and democratization in Poland, democratization in South Korea, and that there's something that's fundamentally similar across these cases about the idea of democratization and where it comes from and why it happens. So with this ontology that we have in political science that's based on patterns, we think that the use of a scientific approach would be appropriate because we are able to look at and understand some of the nature of these patterns. Um, and so this leads us to our next part, which is epistemology. So epistemology asks the question of what constitutes valid knowledge and how do we attain it? Um, so whereas ontology is about how orderly and understandable and patterned the, the world is, um, and then in political science, we think that it is orderly and patterned. Epistemology is more about us as human beings, right? How are we capable of understanding this order? How do you gain knowledge about that world? And so with political science, we have an epistemology that says that the, the world is knowable using the scientific method, using social science. So this means that evidence can be collected and that this evidence is objectable, objective, um, that it's attainable, and that we're able to collect reliable and valid data. And that we can learn more about the world using this evidence by testing hypotheses. Um, so using a, a similar process as you would in the hard sciences, we can develop and then test hypotheses about social and political behavior. And so we're able to learn more about the world in this fashion. So the, the implication of this epistemology is that we can learn more about, say, how people have voted in the past and then use that to develop explanatory models of voter behavior that account for the influence of gender, class, race, et cetera, on voting behavior. And that this is something that's knowable and that you can develop these hypotheses and that it doesn't necessarily even matter where you personally stand on the ideological spectrum, if you're left or right or whatever, um, that you'd be using a similar approach to try to understand these questions. And so finally, theory. So what is a political science theory? A political science theory, this is a body of statements that we use to synthesize knowledge about and then explain phenomena that are related to, to politics. I'm going to break down each of these um, italicized components here to understand it and pick it apart a little bit more. So the first part is that we're trying to synthesize knowledge. The hope here is that we are able to simplify the complex messiness of the world, that we can come up with some general models and patterns to understand things, and that we are able to explain, that we can assess causes and effects of political phenomena. So we can develop sort of maps of the world to help us understand it, and that these can be addressing issues of causality. So to try to think through what theories are, let's go through a couple of examples. Um, first, we can have questions about social revolutions. So imagine that you wanted to know why social revolutions happened. And so uh, there's a political scientist named Theta Scotchpole, and she looks at why, this question of why revolutions happen. And to do so, she examines cases of 
uh, the cases of France, China, and Russia, to develop a larger theory about why countries have social revolutions, whereas some other ones don't. So her, her objective is not just to understand, say, the French Revolution on its own, but it's to try to understand these broader patterns that we see out there and develop a, a theory to explain that. Likewise, there we could look at the democratic peace theory. And so the democratic peace theory says that democracies do not go to war with other democracies. And so if you are looking to assess the democratic peace theory and develop this, you're not just going to look at one democracy. You're not aiming to say, understand why does the United States go to war with certain countries and not others? That could be part of it. But the underlying idea is that you're trying to explain this broader question about democracies overall. Okay, um, And so taking these three ideas of ontology and epistemology and theory, we can see how they are related. Um, so our theories are based on the ontology and epistemology that I laid out earlier on, that we think that the world is orderly and that it's knowable and that we can develop explanations that are based on that. Um, and then we develop that through the scientific method.